thank you very much for coming back or <laughs> allowing me to come back. And uh, I was, for me, this is such an honor to be here. And it's one of my all time favorite conferences. I would say tied for first place really because it's such an unusual combination of practice, you know, sort of thoughtfulness and um, heart, right? Uh, to come to a conference like this, you know, sort of they're mindful therapist types, you know, that's not that uncommon, but to do it as a community of practice that has a special feeling uh, in this setting. And I want to thank you for welcoming me here. It's as someone who's been through a lot of different kinds of spiritual training, as well as psychology training, as well as the wild and woolly world of the human potential movement. It was kind of like my background as a garage band rock and roller before I finally went to formal music school when I learned psychoanalysis and all that stuff and got a PhD. Anyway, out of all that, all the ways of practicing, all the ways of engaging the mind productively as modes of practice, I think there are basically three clusters of modes of practice. The first and most fundamental, most primary, is simply to be with what's there. Experience the experience, feel the feelings, bear the suffering. With that being with what's there, hopefully we add some useful factors like being able to disidentify, step back from, let's say, what's arising, and uh, be, uh, have a sense of it appearing in a vast field of um, awareness that doesn't have edges to it, thereby boundless. Um, also, maybe investigate, well, what's that about? You know, the Buddha used the metaphor of disentangling a lot. How do we disentangle? He was a pre-modern, post-modernist. He was very deconstructive, you know, pulling apart the threads of the tapestry of experience, right? Endlessly woven by the enchanted loom of the brain. Uh, so we investigate. Uh, one of the seven factors of awakening, as you probably know in Buddhism, uh, we investigate. Maybe we sense down to what's deeper, perhaps younger, more vulnerable under the experience, maybe the hurt that underlies anger. In the process of that being with, uh, the contents of consciousness may change, but we're not actually, we're not actively attempting to nudge them one way or another. We're not making what could be called wise efforts with the contents of consciousness, right? This is a fundamental mode of practice. Often it's all we can do is just ride out the storm and try not to add insult to injury. Uh, in the most radical forms of being with, which could be called choiceless awareness. There's different language for that in different traditions. Zen, some schools of Zen, shikantaza, just sitting, uh, and calm abiding. Um, just pretty much nothing but being with is there. Also, as practice matures, what I see in people, I see in myself, I see in my teachers, uh, that as pr practice progresses more and more, there's just this being with what's there, kind of radically present with what's right there at the front edge of now, the emergent edge of now, while continuously letting it go with insight into its transience and its, te in a technical sense, its emptiness, its lack of absolute um, uh, arising, uh, okay? But it's not the only mode of practice. And in my opinion, this mode of practice has become in many circles overvalued and uh, dogmatized. It's become, you know, uh, speechified and uh, established as a kind of only way to practice. Additionally, you know, we have releasing what's problematic, letting go of tension in the body, bending feelings, abandoning unwholesome desires, seeing through pathogenic beliefs, you know, ideas that views, wrong views that make us suffer in other people as well. And we also need to grow the, what's useful, what's beneficial. I'm, that's what I mean by positive, beneficial, that which increases happiness and welfare for ourselves and other beings. For example, we cultivate compassion, cultivate loving kindness. We cu cultivate the capacity to tolerate our own pain. We cultivate empathy. We cultivate the ability, as I've been working on, to really see the suffering in Donald Trump, <laughs> for example. Or other forms where you realize it's more skillful when you're talking with your wife and she's got a problem and more and more it looks like it's you to <laughs> lean in rather than lean out. You know, you learn that, little subtleties. Or there you are, you're meditating away and something opens. There's a, oh, there's an opening into a new way of being, what the Russian developmentalist Vygotsky called uh, the uh, proximal zone of development, kind of the, the emergent edge, the, the growing edge, you know, that which we've already learned there's not much benefit in focusing on learning it ever more deeply because we've got that. You know, that which is out of reach, 
there's not much value in going after it. It's just frustrating and disappointing. But that which is within our kind of growing edge, oh yeah. So there you are in meditation or in life and there's a sense of, oh, I could be a little softer in this way or I could be a little firmer in that way. Or, oh, it's, uh, it's a little lighter way to be, you know, dealing with the pressures in my life, let's say. Oh, and then right there is an opportunity to cultivate that, to appreciate that, to protect it and help it grow. All right. If we were to use the metaphor of a garden, we could witness it, pull weeds, grow flowers, let be, let go, let in. A couple key points. One is that mindfulness is present in all three modes of practice. We are mindful as we release tension in the body, as we let the feelings flow, as we see through views that we have that are problematic. We are mindful as we cultivate compassion, as we rest the mind upon loving kindness and grow that. We are mindful of mindfulness. It's, we are mindful of mindfulness itself. Uh, there's a way in which mindfulness, uh, kind of misunderstanding in my view, that is inadvertent but has become increasingly problematic, uh, identifies mindfulness strictly with this orientation, this mode of practice in the mind. Uh, that's a mistake. Uh, uh, using engaging wise effort to decrease the negative and increase the positive is not at odds with mindfulness. Mindfulness serves these and actually these serve the development of mindfulness as well. Okay? So it's in that context then, in my view, that I'm now going to talk about how to actually uh, use modern neuropsychology to increase the felt sense inside of fullness and balance to decrease the causes inside of deficit and disturbance that are the fundamental biological, embodied, animal body uh, source of the craving that creates so much suffering. It's quite extraordinary that, given the kind of classic saying, neurons that fire together wire together, traditional saying is uh, the mind takes its shape from whatever it repeatedly rests upon, for better or worse. It's interesting that as we repeatedly have responsive mode experiences of needs met, enough safety in the moment, enough satisfaction in the moment, enough connection in the moment. The soft animal of the body in the line of the poet Mary Oliver can come home, can come home. As we rest the mind on those experiences, which are so easy to just blow right by, including in modern life that just is an ADD culture and skitters us on to the next thing. As we rest the mind on those green zone responsive mode experiences, those passing states can leave lasting residues behind as traits woven into the very fabric of the nervous system. As we gradually acquire those traits of, um, let's say, calm strength for safety or contentment, gratitude, a sense of accomplishment, uh, clarity about goals in terms of satisfaction as we develop uh, a sense of compassion, love, and kindness, and expand the circle of us, even to include all of them. As we do that, we become more and more able to meet the challenges of life, including the sense of things as pleasant or unpleasant or relational or neutral. Meet those moments at the front edge of now while staying uh, green, as it were, responsive, staying with a fundamental sense of peace and contentment and love 